I absolutely love where Keith Lee's character is going. With the wrong one! You will never beat me! Just phenomenal. I mean, originality. We never seen someone squeezing their cushy ball and screaming. <laughs> The season premiere of Monday Night Raw was boring, so I'm gonna keep this review short but sweet. The biggest takeaway is that Retribution is basically buried already. So a couple of weeks ago it was revealed that Ali is the leader. By the way, it's not Mustafa Ali anymore, it's Mustafa Ali. Mustafa? Mustafito. Mustafinarita. Mustafa. Well, this faction is gonna be the biggest thing on Monday Night Raw right now. Well, not really. So on this episode of Raw, not only did they lose the match, they tapped out and got destroyed by The Fiend after the match. It almost felt like WWE did this on purpose, you know, basically finding new ways, many ways to bury these people in under 20 minutes. And it's kind of a shame because this promo was actually very good. But how can you take these guys seriously when they never won an actual match? And when you tap out, it's even worse. But let's talk about Monday Night Raw, a very disappointing show, so like I've said, I'm gonna keep it short and sweet. The show actually kicked off with Alexa Bliss and The Fiend, the newest addition to Monday Night Raw, but they get interrupted by Retribution, who got a theme song, so that's good. And while this looks promising, you're kinda excited, you cannot wait to see what's gonna happen next. Perhaps The Fiend is controlling Retribution? Nope! The Fiend disappears, so it was like, okay. This is not a potential story, it wouldn't make sense, so why would you even do this? I don't know. Then we got the Hurt Business, and this turned into Retribution versus the Hurt Business, one of the most disappointing things about Monday Night Raw, the season premiere. So the match is fine, you know, who gives a shit? It didn't feel big, which was unfortunate, but the Hurt Business is already established. Now you need to make sure Retribution wins something. Let's be fair, not all of us can break the same window twice, not all of us can punch a referee. Th that is a big, big boy shit, you know? But let's be fair, they still need to win matches to look legit. So not only did they lose, they tapped out. This basically told you that WWE don't care about these guys. I mean, let's be fair, people. WWE didn't know it's Mustafa Ali because a few months ago, he was losing against Riddick Moss on main event. So if they don't care about Ali... They probably don't care about Retribution. Then we got The Fiend and he basically destroyed Retribution, so it's like, why? If they're not trying to bury these people on purpose, I don't know what it is then. Later on the show we got a very good promo by Mustafa Ali and he basically revealed why he did this, which is actually very good if I'm being honest. He said, you know, WWE never gave me a chance. There are a lot of forgotten superstars. I've seen a lot of people, you know, turning on their partners and stuff. This is a corrupt company. And he actually revealed, yes, I was the hacker. I was the SmackDown hacker. So I like it because it makes sense. Finally, we got the answers. We knew it's Mustafa Ali. It was obvious, but at least they mentioned it. The unfortunate thing is, even though this promo was great, it happened after they already lost. How can we take you seriously when you can't win a match against some of the WWE's mid-carders? I love the Hurt Business, but let's be fair. This whole Retribution Survivor Series rivalry against the WWE is not a possibility anymore. We also saw Asuka vs Lana for Raw Women's Championship, which was, I mean, I guess better than expected, but it was nice, short, and sweet. So Asuka wins the match, retains the title, we got Nia Jax, we got Lana through the table, again, I don't know what's the obsession, these are your potential new challengers, it's either Nia Jax or Shina or both. Who gives a shit? AJ Styles got a new manager, it's one of Tozawa's ninjas, the big ass ninja, that is the tallest son of a bitch I've ever seen in my entire life, holy sh- Imagine being this tall but your thing is average, it looks like a baby carrot, just speculation, I don't know. But AJ looks tiny in front of this guy, wow. To be honest people, I don't know why would AJ Styles need that guy, 
But one thing's for sure, he was presented as an absolute beast and people were afraid of this guy. And by the way, AJ Styles vs. Matt Riddle was actually pretty okay. I liked this spot very much. Uh, it was an okay match. We got, you know, him being distracted by the big ass dude. So we got Styles Clash and AJ won the match. That was basically it. Look how big this guy is. We got an Elias concert. It was a real concert. Yes, we got a band. But then Jeff Hardy started playing in the background. Who could that be? Do you guys care? I mean, Jeff Hardy should be in a way more important priority. We got Kofi versus Sheamus. This looks like something straight from 2010. Anyway, that was actually pretty decent. And of course, Kofi Kingston won the match. Seems like the New Day are in a rivalry against Sheamus. And I don't really understand why. I get it, it's Big E. But they should probably be in a tag team rivalry since the tag team championships don't mean shit. Titus Worldwide wants to be in the hurt business, over, over, over. And they, well, they don't want Titus O'Neil in the hurt business, and I don't understand why, dude. You already have Lashley, you have Shelton, Cedric, MVP. It's time to bring in a barking man into your faction. Having a bunch of giants, big dudes, high flyers, talkers, it's great. But I remember seeing a faction that had a barking man. Oh, well. Dude, we got the Firefly Funhouse. I don't care, man. I, yeah, I, I, if I'm being honest, I love Bray Wyatt, but the Firefly Funhouse... It's kind of the same thing every week now. The ending was good because Alexa Bliss joined. Uh, it looks like she's rocking that Freddy Krueger attire. We also got Keith Lee versus Braun Strowman, which was your typical big man versus big man. I don't think the Thunderdome can take this. Yeah, the Thunderdome is gonna explode. We got head to the deck and that's how Braun Strowman won the match. But then we saw Keith Lee getting angry, kicking him in the deck as well. And, you know, grabbing himself by the balls, by the big cushy uh, ball. So we got Morrison and The Miz challenging Tucker, but Tucker doesn't have a partner because Otis is in SmackDown. Well, he has a partner. Yeah, it's a... Yeah. And they won the match because every time you see The Miz and John Morrison, they lose the match. And the show ended with Randy Orton talking about Hell in a Cell inside Hell in a Cell. He mentioned Mark Henry vs. Randy Orton match, which has to be the worst Hell in a Cell match of all time, let's be fair. Well, that was a decent promo. We got Drew McIntyre, Randy Orton was acting tough until this. And you know what? That's how the show ended. We didn't see the brawl. We don't know what happened. So yeah, three hours of Raw. You're not gonna see what's happening right here, but you damn I'm sure we'll see Lana in the ring. I don't know, man. It was called season premiere. It's supposed to be good, in my opinion, right? If they're calling it a special edition of Raw, you expect something good. This has to be one of the worst shows of 2020. I don't even know why, but this show just had this bad vibe. But thank you for watching the video. The way one, peace, love, and hugs. It's been a pleasure. <laughs>